Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't yet, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the little notification bell so we'll, you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. And if you tap the little like button, that's good too. Thank you. Okay, we are still on this bike. We're going to be on it for a while. And I'm going through and in, in my own odd organization here. What I'm doing today is I'm going to pull this primary apart. This primary chain is real loose. And I want to see how bad a shape it's in because I have another used one to put on it. Which is something I wanted to mention again anyway. Is all we're getting doing is getting this bike running so Mike can ride it. Now that's not... Cameraman Mike, that's a different Mike. All of us are named Mike, and we actually are. But anyway, I want to take this primary chain off. I want to take the clutch apart. Uh, I remember last time the bike was running, it was giving my buddy trouble, and I just as soon take it apart now and be ready to do that. Then once I get this apart, I can wash it all up while the oil is draining and things like that. So... Basically, what I'm going to do is take the clutch apart, and I don't expect to find anything really nice in there. I'm not expecting to find anything nice anywhere. Now, this is a, pro a process I go through. I set one of these little adjustable rules, so I know where this thing was set the last time. The book recommends an inch right here from the pressure plate to the releasing disc, from the edge of it right down to the disc and it's a little over an inch the later ones are an inch and a 32nd and truth of the matter is numbers like that in the book are a good thing to pay attention to they're a really good starting place when you got a bunch of worn stuff it may work and it may not uh, you may put it together and take the bike out and the clutch will slip and you'll need to take up on these to increase the tension of the springs. But basically, that's it. We've shown this before, but I'm showing it again because this is the bike that we're doing and we're going to find all kinds of, what can I say, malfunctions and worn things and... and a bike like this, well, let me be honest here. There have been a lot of times in my life when I put something new on my bike and I put the old one back on the shelf. That old one back on the shelf may be better than the next one I have to work on. And when myself or my buddies don't have the money for a new part, quite often an old one will suffice. In this case, we're just going to get this bike running for a while, and that'll be fine. So I just put a, uh, if it works, I just put a shovel head valve collar on there to use as a washer. To hold that all together. Now, truth of the matter is, I may disassemble it all and wash it anyway, but... You keep it all in one piece, it's a little easier to deal with. But I want to get this chain off of here, and we'll look at it and see how worn it is. And if I have a used one that's better than this one, we'll use it. We ain't proud. Or not too proud to use a used part, anyway. Okay, now that comes off as one piece like that because we put this washer right here. Now this is an early type clutch. This is called a half plate. plate. There's fiber on one side and nothing on the other. That's the last one in when you're putting it together. And again, we'll go through it when we put it together. Yeah, what I'm finding is a bunch of really soaked 
nasty stuff. Yeah, it's not that bad. I've seen worse. Taking all the plates out. Take a pick here so I can reach in there and get it out. I stack it all in order that it came out just so I know how it was functioning and any changes I need to make I can make. Well that's not too bad. See all that oil and water. Now if you look into the primary here you can see, let me get myself a rag for my hands. If you look in there, you can see all that rust and junk. And what that basically is, is somebody hosed this thing off and got a bunch of water in the primary. These old tin primaries do not keep water out. So be aware you hose this thing off you're going to get water in there and it mixed with the oil that was going in to lube the uh, the chain now sometimes you can get this whole thing off by sliding the trans forward but it doesn't look like that's going to happen here so we'll put it back on for the moment and we'll take this sprocket off. Let's see. Thank you. Let's see, I don't have any air. Let's see. I think Mike's hooking up the air for me. And if he does that, we now have air. Now the motor sprocket here is put on with a, is held on with a nut. It's on a tapered shaft. And it's a right hand thread. The motor is always a right hand thread. So we're going to make it go to the left to take it off. And there it is. Now, once we get that off, we'd like this sprocket to come right off. And the book says, just tap it on the edge with a hammer. It is a tapered shaft, so that may do it. Not really. Don't really want to hit the chain. Nope, it's not going to come off. So what we're going to do is we may actually hurt this chain, but we're going to put a we're going to put a puller on here. This is not a Harley Davidson tool. This is an antique puller that I use for lots of things. I mean, lots of things. And with a little luck, it'll come right off. In fact, it may take a lot of luck. I don't know. So we'll do this right here. I think it'll come off. That made me happy. There we go. Now that sprocket is off. I doubt that we heard anything. And now we can pull the clutch basket off and see just how bad this thing really is. Now you can see all the muck and junk and stuff in there that I need to wash. And I don't need to wash that on a video. I will wash it out with, uh, oh, either some parts cleaner or some alcohol. My favorite is always alcohol because it's not so nasty. 
I've already got hay fever, so. And let's see how bad that chain looks. The best way to look at a chain is to hold it up and see how much it curves. And this one is not, I wouldn't say it's really nice, but it's not that bad. I had a good worn one I put away and I brought it out so I could put it in there. But you can see, it's nowhere near that bad. And I'm thinking, we'll probably put this one in it. I mean, I'd like him to be able to ride this bike for a little while before we tear it apart and, and redo the whole thing. But for now, we're just trying to get a bike under him. He needs his therapy just like anyone else. So what I think I'll do, let's see, where'd I put those nuts? There they are. So what we'll do is we'll take the uh, we'll take the clutch hub out of there, and it doesn't look too bad either. Now we'll look at these fingers here on it, and they're worn. You can see the wear marks, but you can just see them. You can't feel them as bad. They aren't really that bad. I'm really pleased to see this thing like this because we're trying to do this on very little money. Again, it's just to get it running. And then once he can run it and ride it and see what he does and doesn't like about it, then we can take it all apart and put it back together the way he wants. So, the clutch hub nut, this one right here, and it is an early one, is a left-hand thread. So we're going to get it loose real quick. Well, that was nice. And now we'll take the appropriate puller. And this is for all different models and stuff. And what I did years ago is I put a little mark here and here and here so I could see <laughs> the best way it goes on. And there it is. Why it's not going on there, I don't know. Nothing in that hole. Oh, you know what it is? That clutch rod is hammered. And the end is too big. It's too big to go in the hole of this puller. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen one like that in a while. Yep, and the other end isn't letting it come through either. Well, gee, I guess what we'll have to do is take the kicker cover out and knock that thing through there. Worst things have been known to happen. What I'm going to need to do is go to the other side of the bike and see if I can do that without pulling the pipes off. Uh, no, I can't. I got to pull that pipe to get the kicker cover off. And so I guess we'll pull the pipe off. What a nice surprise. Oh, 
Okay. You know what? This is going to be a project to get this pipe off of here. And I don't really want to do it on this video. So what I think I'm going to do is just go right over here and say, okay, we've got this open. We've run into a problem with the push rod. And I think I can grind that down a little bit and take it apart, but I'm still going to need to take it out through the kicker side. So, hmm. Let me try that one more time. See if I can maybe get it on there. I'm glad I can. Rather unorthodox manner of doing that. And I will get that clutch hub off. <clears throat> There, shock and amazement, huh? And we'll put these nuts on. And I put them on backwards because I really don't want to tear up the adjusting notch in here. <clears throat> but we'll need new push rod because that one is mushroomed on the end, which means the hardening is no longer functioning there. And so we'll need to replace it. And it's going on. Of all the things you got to have right when you ride one of these things, the primary is so important. You got to have that chain working right. You've got to have the tension on it pretty good. You got to have the clutch working good. So, no point in starting the motor until you got all of this sorted out. Because in the first ride, that clutch could easily quit working from that clutch rod being soft on the end. Once they get past the hardening, now it seems to me I didn't pull the right socket for this puller. Which looks like a seven eighths. You get a seven eighths socket here. That looks like a seven eighths, and it is. Okay. Off comes the clutch hub right about now. Well, gee. And the key fell out, which is normal. And here comes the clutch hub. I guess maybe what I ought to do is pull it off like that. Okay, there it is. And I'm happy to say it's off. And nothing looks terrible in here. Uh, we're not going to open this up and put a new seal on the trans. When I open that trans, it's going to be to go through the trans. So I'd rather not do it. 
So we're not going to find out what, how everything is in there. It was functioning. All four gears worked last time I remember. So we'll be fine. So I think what I want to do in the next video, because I'm going to have to clean this up and nobody needs to watch me clean it. In the next video, I think what we'll do is drain the fluids out and uh, go from there. So until then, I'll see you out on the road.